trying to learn how to use my new scope here. I've been looking at a device I made when I was a kid and it was a chip I bought from Radio Shack, a noise generating chip and it had a diagram of how to make a circuit that had both white and pink outputs. I used this old broadband amplifier that I hollowed out, it was a bad amp. It's worked all that time I guess, although I can see now that it's not working properly. Not much of a surprise, this is decade old now. The pink noise output looks pretty good, the white noise output is strange. I don't really know how it's doing that. I'm getting this uh, two bars, like real heavy folding at the extremes. Basically that's all that you can see from the outside. I'm sure it's a mess inside, I'll have to get daring and open it up later I guess. But the pink noise doesn't look that far off really, it's got a, like a random low frequency pattern to it. It's got kind of a constant hiss. High frequency contents look kind of constant. That's hard to judge though because it's pink noise so that the, the uh, white is going to be lower. The high end is going to be... It's, ener it's by energy. I think pink if I remember right is energy per octave is the same. So you get a downward slight slope. If you're looking at strict uh, analog. Uh, linear. <laughs> Throw up some words here. Something will stick eventually. If you're looking at a strictly linear analog scale, something some valuable screws over here. If I double down on the wrong words, it'll sound right. Ta da! But it does work. Wow, there's your hum. There's your 60 cycles. Or 120 probably. The ground's back in. Both came off. But the pink noise looks pretty good. The white noise, I can't explain how I'm getting that look. I've blown it up in frequency and everything else, and it just looks strange. Let me see if I can go to channel 2 only. And see if I blow the amplitude up, it just, it's like a clipped waveform. Kind of strange. It's all full of high frequency, you know, loaded up full of random high frequency noise. But it's like bound in this clipping range. And they built it March 10th, 1984. Still, it's pretty old. Probably no excuse for how horrible it's going to look inside, but we'll see. I had these two RCA adapters onto it. Making RCA. Most applications. I don't think this is a noise generator for anything but audio. I don't think it's supposed to go high enough to use it for anything else. And of course, nowadays, noise generators are used in digital to simulate a full digital load on a, a multi, on a wide broadband noise source. Uh, looks a lot like a broadband data source. You can simulate a huge amount of data with noise sometimes in certain applications. Ta-da, it is free! It's as ugly as I thought it would be. I don't know if I really want to pry through all this junk. Oops, I'm off the screen. My electrical tape. Basically, I just wanted to use the power supply out of this module and cut away the PC board, except for the power supply. I don't think I stuck it on with one screw. And then I just have my capacitors all paralleled up to make the right values. I don't know why this one is so cockeyed. Probably a bad cap on this uh, white noise output, I'm guessing. Maybe I'll to get that later if I get patient. Well, I had this thing opened up and it was pretty ugly inside. A lot of this yellow tape everywhere, which I've removed most of it. My soldering did hold together. Nothing broken here. The thing is, I, I saw that tape and I shoved it back together and said, well, screw making a video on this. It works. It's never going to be perfect anyway. I need to make a better noise generator probably. 
if I have something that just works, you know, it's kind of half working, that's fine. So I started putting it back together, but when I did, it didn't work anymore. <laughs> Somehow I broke it. And there was this little LED in front I thought was an LED, but it's actually a grain of wheat bulb. And I'm thinking I probably used this as part of a voltage divider. I'm going to have to take this apart, this last blob, I'm afraid. This blob here is just uh, equivalent to a capacitor, and I actually put the value of the capacitor it's equivalent to on it. In case I ever open this up again and want to put a real cap in there, so that's cool. Maybe I did a similar thing in here when I take it apart better. And this is just my voltage divider, I believe, here. I should probably take that tape off next. But anyway, somehow I blew it. I wonder if I just broke the uh, filament in the bulb and uh, stopped it that way, or if I made a short and blew one of the diodes or something. I guess I'm going to have to probe around with the voltmeter and try to figure it out. I'll probably edit some of this for your viewing pleasure. I think the deal with these power supplies is they were like 15 volts in these amplifier, 15 or 24, somewhere in that neighborhood. And I probably wanted to get it down for this chip. So I probably got a heck of a voltage divider here. And it's probably why I used a light bulb too, to not dissipate it all in heat. And I didn't have voltage regulators handy back then. Oops. Or am I getting nothing but I'm getting a spark? What's the deal here? Wow. For a meter is reading nothing. I'm sure I'm getting a spark. I'm not. Yeah, I am in the current. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wonder why it didn't work. <laughs> I might want to edit this part out. All right, let's see what happens when I check for voltage. Hmm. Let me just clip that on so I get a good steady volt. I believe that's my positive, that pin one. 26 volts! Well, it's probably safe to say I cooked the chip. My voltage divider failed somehow when I was playing with all these wires. I probably uh, shorted something out. I don't see it changing though. It's not like there's something it just barely touched. I don't really see what I did here. I'm going to investigate further and get back to you. 26 volts though. I guess I'm... Probably screwed in that chip unless there's no ground to the chip at all. Maybe I just lost my ground connection to my divider. Maybe everything's cool. We'll see. I doubt it. And not a floating ground. Unfortunately, I really am getting 27 volts across the chip. So, this is now scrap. I'm going to unsolder the chip though just to see what the part number is. And here's the data sheet I found online. And a little information, you can pause it and look at it later. The strange thing is it takes quite a bit of voltage, so I'm not really sure why I blew it. Maybe I blew it by 2 volts, it looks like. But I wasn't getting any output, and I had the voltage across the chip still, so... And it really needs a buffer to work properly, or a high Z.